Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Must have had him off, huh? Yeah. Rick, order that system this afternoon. Would you do that? I'm just kidding. I know. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> That's a private joke. That's a private joke. Rick knows what I'm talking about. Praise God. Amen. Thank the Lord for his goodness, right? Isn't it good to know the Lord? Praise God. I am so glad this morning that we can come into his presence and feel his confidence, his assurance, praise God, of what he wants to do in Jesus' name. Praise God. And so thankful for you being here. I just trust that you will put your hand in his hand today. Praise God. I have been, um, it's amazing to me. I guess I've been here too long. I don't know, maybe not long enough. God only knows. But again, this week, the prognosticators came out. And while, boy, some people just got hit right between the eyes, and it's like everything is going down. And I think, Gillette, I think we only have about a week and a half left here, folks. You better pack up everything, and you better leave, because I think by about the end of next week, it's going to be over. I, I just, that's what I heard anyway. And I know that's what some of you heard, because I can tell by your spirit. Amen. Now, I'm not trying to be funny, folks. I'm just trying to tell you that, you know, one of the, the, the greatest, one of the great benefits of serving the Lord is that you don't have to be worried about the world. Amen. Jesus, you know, David said it, you know, and of course, he lived a long time too, but he said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Never. So I guess in 2016, it's going to be different, right? Now, I know there's a couple of you that are getting really mad at me right now, but I, it's, I, it doesn't matter to me. I'm trying to minister to the rest of them right now is what I'm trying to do. Listen, folks, uh, uh, the, you know, uh, the economy is based upon Jesus Christ in my life. And I'm not a know-it-all. I, I haven't been, like I said, I don't know if I've not been here long enough or I've been here too long. I don't know that just yet. But I do know that I have seen a few things, and I've seen the up-and-down economy in this city go up and down. My goodness, when we first got here, you know, they, they said that, you know, that you better, in fact, I'll tell you what happened. Let me just tell you what happened. When I was, um, when I came to this city, we came in the, and the church had not been open for a while and that type of thing. And so we were trying to get things going and ended up with a, just a lot of challenges. And it was, <laughs> I can laugh about it now, but boy, at that time it wasn't. And it was a lot colder then. I think that first weekend we came into Gillette, it was, I think it was around uh, the end of February. And it was below zero, and it was blowing, and, and I thought I left all that behind in Iowa. But boy, was I wrong, praise God. But we were out there trying to set things up, and things didn't, you know, were going slow and all that kind of business. And a person stopped at the church out there. And here was my welcoming committee. This was, they stopped out there, and we had these, you know, the cement things that out here so you don't run into the building. You know what I'm talking about when you pull up and you can put your tire on it so you don't pull, you know, you know, and I don't know if they'll stop you from going into the building, but hopefully your brakes will work. Um, but um, uh, they were, we were out there, and this lady got out of the car, her and somebody else, and they began lifting them up, and I said, what are you doing? And she said, well, we're taking these. <laughs> Why are you taking them? I said, no, I said, those belong to the church. She said, well, we heard the church is closed down and wasn't going to open up again. That was my welcoming committee. So I understand a little bit about prognosticators. I understand a little bit about the negative and that kind of thing. And so I, I, I've got the confidence in the Lord. I'm telling you, he can do anything, praise God. But I'll tell you one thing. He allows us to go through those kind of things so that we can really, one of the major reasons is so that we'll learn how to depend on him, so that we'll learn how to have him become the Lord of our lives. And, 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 and so on and so forth. And so I feel that here this morning. I feel like there's some that, that really that's what you would like to have, but um, you, you just you hear too many things, and, and sometimes it's just a great temptation to say, I'm going to bail, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move, I'm going to get out of here, you know. I'll never forget, and, and I, I think this is going to help somebody. I hope it does anyway. And you'd say, well, you're a pastor, you're called to Gillette, that type of thing. Well, listen to me, saying of God, you better be called somewhere. There's not too many floaters in the kingdom of God that make it. People have to get somewhere and stay. That's really what they have to do, and they have to make up their minds. 
But I'll never forget another incident. We were going through, um, again, trials, and, and, and these are not new to us, ups and downs, and so on and so forth. And of course, I went over to the church. This was after about three years we were here. And I began to lay it out to the Lord. I said, God, you know, this is looking pretty rough, looking pretty bad. I won't go into all the details because that probably wouldn't help some of you. But nevertheless, it was bad. You know, people were leaving again, and we just had a few left and, and so on and so forth. And um, I, I guess my suggestion came. I said, well, God, maybe it's time for me to leave. And, um, and God said, well, you know, and he didn't say a whole lot. But he started asking me questions. And this is when, when you can really know that you're hearing from the Lord, is when he begins to ask you questions that you really didn't want to ask yourself at the time. Uh, now, somebody could really receive this right now. God will do that. He will ask you. Praise God. He said, everybody's leaving? Okay. He said, um, he said are you going to leave? He asked me that. I, well, you know, you, God knows everything. So lying to God is probably one of the dumbest things you can do, you know. I already had it on my mind. I just thought, you know, God, I just need an exit plan here, you know. And um, I said, well, you know, I'm thinking about it, which really was the truth. And he said, um, he said, would you, would you leave if, if I asked you to stay? Whoa. Wow. Oh. That one, I didn't, that wasn't a quick answer, folks. That was something I had to think about. And um, through prayer meetings and things of that nature, I came to the point where, okay, God, if you ask me to stay, that's important. But I thought that was it. I thought, well, that's it. Okay, now we got this settled. He came with another question. And he said, would you stay if nobody else comes? Wow. Yeah, I know. I, it's very sober in here. But I would hope that some of you are starting to pray with that kind of intent that it's not what you want. It's not what the world's telling you is going to happen. But it has to come to a place where you say, whatever you want, God. Jesus illustrated this for us in the garden. He said, not my will. Your will be done. Yeah, I, I, folks, you could drop a pin in here. But that's the kind of things that happens when God confronts us, is that he's asking us. He said, are you going to do what everybody else does? Or are you going to learn how to do what I want you to do? And I'm not saying that everybody that has left Gillette has been out of the will of God and all that. That would be wrong of me to do that. All I'm saying is that I have to search my heart. And so now you can understand why I don't give a whole lot of credence to newspaper reports and, uh, you know, predictors and things of that nature. Because God is the one. He's taking care of me. And listen to me saying, he wants to take care of you. Oh, I feel the spirit of the Lord in this place for that kind of assurance. He wants to take care of you. But if you're going to believe other people and believe, now, two weeks ago we talked about the voices of, you know, that we hear. And if we can't hear God's voice, I mean, my goodness, and we allow other voices to come in and start telling us what's going to happen, I'm going to tell you something. We run ourselves, we really do run our ships, you know, in, um, um, in, into the ground. We really do. Book of Acts is one of the one as a beautiful book for illustrations because there were real people in there, and here's Paul, and he's living for God. He's preaching the gospel, and he's on his way to um, to Rome. You know, and who knows what's you know he didn't know at the time. You know, it could have been death. It was death as we know it, as history tells us. But the bottom line is he gets out there, and because of a um, uh, a need to get someplace before their time. Here's a captain of a ship that says, we're going to launch out. And Paul, of course, is a praying man. He's somebody that's in touch with God. And he goes to the captain because the captain knows he's a man of God. And, the, and he says, Captain, you better stay in the port here. It don't look good out there. I, I pray, and my God's telling us we, we need to stay. Well, he says, the, in fact, the scripture says that he believed the owners of the ship more than he believed Paul. And that's quite, a, that's quite an, uh, an illustration there. And so they launched out. And who knows, you know, that first day it could have been sunny skies and, and the seas looked pretty friendly and, and, the king, and, and the captain could have been thinking, well, you know, he's, he's one of those fanatics, you know. He's one of those guys that just likes to put God first in everything. My goodness, you know. You know the type, don't you? Yeah, they're just wanting to talk about God a lot. And, and then they bring up this stuff called the Scripture. And all it does is just kind of irritate me a little bit because it just kind of puts me a little bit on pins and needles a little bit. Um, am I talking to anybody here? Yeah, I think so. 
you know. But I don't know how, how soon after they got out of that port, but all of a sudden she hit, folks. The storm came. And you know something? Jesus was not keeping that from us. Because in his um, gospel, the gospel of, of Matthew, he said the same thing. He said the wise person is going to build their house upon a, a, a foundation or a rock. And then what did he tell us? The winds will come. The rains will come. Oh, I, I, I just saw about four or five sets of eyes open. Now you know what's going on. I'm not saying that things won't get bad economy-wise, folks. I'm, I don't even know about that kind of stuff. I think it does. It has several times since we've been out here. And in my opinion, that can be associated with the wind, the rains, the floods. Jesus said they would come. And so if we think we're going to sit here and have 75-degree weather all the way until the rapture, folks, you, you're kidding yourself. You must expect that to happen. And so here's Paul out there. He's stuck on the boat. This guy made a bad decision. But you want to know something? What I like about people who are anchored on the foundation is he didn't quit praying. And if you study that, study it for yourself. You know, the 27th chapter of the book of Acts, it's interesting. I mean, my goodness, they were throwing things off of that ship. I mean, things were bad out there. And there was a time that even the guys that were running the ship, because they knew how much the ship could handle, they were ready to bail. And all of a sudden, the captain starts listening to Paul because he recognized something. This guy knew where we were headed. And Paul gave them orders. He said, tell them to stay on the ship, and there won't be one lost soul. Wow. Now, I'm going to tell you something, folks. In the midst of a storm, you know, all kinds of panic and havoc is going to be let loose. That's where our world is going, by the way. But I'm going to tell you something. There are going to be a people that call upon the name of Jesus that are going to feel a calm, and they're going to feel, praise God, a tremendous confidence. I'm not making this up, folks. And I'm going to tell you something. The reason I'm not is because there's been lots of storms since I've been here. But every time I have felt the calm and the power of God to stay the course in the name of Jesus, man, I wish more of you would receive this, but I'm not going to make you do it. I'm just going to present it. No, this wasn't in my script when I came out here, but I feel like this is the will of God right now. I'm telling you right now. God wants to save his people. He wants to bring you safe to shore, praise God. And when they got close enough to that shore, that's when God let that ship break up because they could use the parts and they could float to the, to the, to the shore and they could all be saved in the name of Jesus. Come on, can somebody feel that kind of, uh, that kind of power here? That's the spirit of God. It's not the oil companies. It's got nothing to do with coal. It's got nothing to do with the natural resources. It's got all to do with the spiritual resources. His name is Jesus. Now, he's giving you an opportunity to grab a hold of this right now. You could go home, and you could get rid of the worry out of your house. You could go home right now, and you could feel the peace and the joy and the power of the Almighty God in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I'm not ashamed to worship the name of Jesus. Jesus. I'm not ashamed to call upon his name. Hallelujah. Come on, folks. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Do you feel that? The doom and the gloom that you brought in is lifted right now in the name of Jesus. And people can be ministered to because he is Lord. He is my God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Wow. Wow. I could go home right now. Oh, in the name of Jesus and feel good. I'm telling you, folks, I can't make this stuff up. I can't script this. I have to trust him. And that's really one of the things that he's doing, praise God. The Bible says when Paul was writing to the young minister, Timothy, he said, I would have you to pray. And I'm, I, I don't know for verbatim, but in the second chapter of 1 Timothy, it talks about praying for kings and praying for leaders and, and all of this kind of business. And I, I feel that way, folks. When I have a tendency to want to put Obama down, God will just tap on my shoulder and say, that's not your job description. You are to pray for him. No, I didn't say I agreed with him. I'm just saying I am to pray for him. And that principle is intact no matter what, praise God 
leaders are to be prayed for. And then it says for, to pray for everybody. Amen. And boy, that can go on for hours and that type of thing. But it says there's, there's a reason for that. And it says that they would come and be saved. Praise God. And we understand that being saved is not joining a church or, or acting right or doing the right things. No, being saved is being born again as Jesus g gave to us. And then he said, and that all people would come into the knowledge of the truth. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. Part of the truth or, or a portion of the truth is to trust God. We have to learn to trust him no matter what. Praise God. Paul had an incredible um, relationship with God to, stand, to sit on that ship. You know, at one point in time, 14 days went by and they didn't even see the sky. Would you like to be on a ship like that? Toss and tool and fro, and I mean to tell you, things were coming off of that ship that they thought were important when they left the port. Saint, that's what he's doing to you. He's helping you to throw some things out that have had a noose around your neck for too long. You thought that was way important. I heard somebody the other day, and I'm just going to relate this to you. I feel like this would be a good time to do it. This church has been endeavoring to do prayer, and, and, and we're, we're pursuing that in a lot of different directions um, and, um, and glad to do it. We have corporate prayer here several times during the week, and you're welcome to come and join any and every time, praise God, because it would do your heart some good. But one of the things I felt the Lord uh, instruct me at the first of the year because we're used to coming together and having prayer meetings, he said, you've got to help them to start establishing a personal prayer life help them to do that. That's what God told me. And so I know if I've mentioned it more than you really care for me to mention it, I'm just doing that because God has told me to do that. That you, it's going to be very important for you to know how to get a hold of God. I'm not saying you won't have the help of the church. I'm not saying that we won't have times when we can come together and really feel the impact of that. But I think more importantly, wherever you're at, you're going to have to have that confidence that I can get a hold of him. I can not only lift up my hands, but I can lift up my voice un- ashamedly praise God that I am not ashamed I'm not talking about going into a full-blown worship service right in the middle of everybody but I'm talking about not being afraid to call upon the name of the Lord I'm gonna tell you something folks he's there he will be there praise God and what a tremendous witness in Jesus name but one of the things I would like you to consider I have been considering this for about a year now myself because I heard it a couple of years ago and it really really hit me hard the man said, he said, why don't you record your prayers for the whole week? And I haven't done that yet because I don't have any mechanism, but I've been really paying attention to with how I pray, you know, and that type of thing. And he said, find out your prayer. How much of your prayer is involved in the temporal? And how much of your prayer is involved in the eternal? Wow. Boy, does that one separate the men from the boys. And that's really where God is trying to take his church. I would that all men would be saved. That's eternal. And come into the knowledge of the truth. That's eternal. That's not temporary. And so Larry and Barb, they've been so good and gracious in this church to send out prayer requests. And I try every time. We will pray. That's just my standard response. Because I know how to text that. I don't misspell those three words. Do I? Yeah. We. I can spell that. I can do that with the thumbs, you know. Will. W-I-L. I mean, I can do that one. Pray. But I do. I don't just type it down. I pray. But I'll tell you something, folks. Sometimes I don't just pray for what they're asking for. And I'm not trying to be the judge here, folks. But I see how temporal it is. And yes, God could fix every one of your problems. Yes, he could. But by about an hour later, you'd have a whole brand new set of them. See, he's trying to bring something eternal into the equation. And that's what he's doing, praise God. And so I don't know how many of those people on the ship, I don't know how many were, were eternally affected by a man of God who had contact with the Lord during probably one of the worst storms they ever had in their life. And these were sailors. They'd probably been around the block a few times. You know, last week we talked about the Titanic. Isn't that ironic how God's given us these illustrations? Amen. Listen to this story. I think this one here is one that will help too. 
because our perspectives have to be changed. And God is able and willing to do that, but he'll never take it out of your hand. You have to. Somebody said one time, we're wanting to know why. Why is this going on? And I heard a man of God say here not too long ago, he said, yes, God will give you the why when it doesn't matter anymore. Amen. Will you stay if nobody else comes? Wow. Why? What good would that do, God? Well, his eternal purpose would be fulfilled because there's going to be a light everywhere. God said this gospel would be preached into all the world. And so this is why we got to understand that God, he showed me that years later, by the way. And he didn't give me that one right away because it mattered too much. But after a while, I quit asking him, when am I leaving? I quit asking him and all that kind of business. It took me a few years to do that, folks. It did. Now I don't ask. Somebody called me the other day. They said, when are you going to leave? I said, when Jesus tells me to. Now you might say, oh, that's... <laughs> no, I mean that. That's how it works with me. I wouldn't want to be anywhere that God doesn't want me to be. And you want to know why? Because he has the full perspective. Listen to this. In the early 1940s, this lady's name was Ruth. Hi, Ruth. Her name was Ruth. Ruth Gruber was her name, and she was working on behalf of the government. <laughs> well, that should be a flag, right? No. She was working on, on behalf of the government to promote the Alaskan Territory to homesteaders. Boy, what a challenge. Come live in Alaska. We have a Kmart and every... No, we don't have any of them things up here, you know? She traveled by truck and by dog sled, and when she was lucky, she got on a plane. This is back in the 40s. You know, they didn't have highways, they didn't have a whole lot of things that, or I mean, they had a few highways, but they didn't have the things that we had access down here. But in 1942, she was about to board a plane headed for Nome. I don't know if you know where Nome is at, but it's way out there. Amen. Chris, you used to live in Alaska, didn't you? But you didn't live in Nome, did you? Yeah, nobody wants to live in Nome, right? Well, she was headed there, and when she received, uh, you know, she was going to head there when she received a message from the Secretary of the Interior important news. This was before the day of satellite pagers and it wasn't an instant message. In fact, the telegraph operator had to decode it for her. That's how, this is how primitive it was. The bush pilot became very impatient and told her he couldn't wait any longer. Unfortunately, the plane would have to leave without her. So she had a choice to make. We've been talking a lot about choices, haven't we? Please, saint of God, consider letting God start making your choices. He knows. He understands. He's not going to threaten you. He just wants to help you to understand. So you get what's, what's happening? She's getting a message, and she can't leave because she has a superior. She has somebody she answers to. And so this is, in my opinion, where our world has gone, is that most people don't want to answer to anybody anymore. They want to do what they want to do. That's what's happening. That's where our world is. That's why we've got so many problems, and they reoccur on a, on a, on a, on a regular basis. It's because nobody wants to listen to God. They want to talk to him. They want to tell him what they think. But nobody wants to listen to him. And this is what our, our, our situation is. And again, I'm the I'm, I'm same way. I'm with you. I have to listen to him. I had to listen to him here today. And then Sister Carnahan blasts my ears out when she finally got the monitors going. Oh, I just put up with so much, don't I, Corey? I mean, it's just horrible. No, I don't. That's, my goodness, that's all it is. But it is. And so she had to listen. She had to, she had to listen to, to her superior. But the guy in the plane is saying, we got to go. And I understand sometimes up there in those kind of countries where they got storms moving in and all that kind of business and they have a little envelope of a time. But listen to me. Last Sunday night, if you weren't here, we talked about Elijah getting back to his personal relationship with God. 
And one of the most important ingredients was is that he heard that still, small voice. And we, we discovered that the word still there in the book of um, uh, First uh, Kings means whisper. God wants to whisper to us, not always holler at us. And so this is what we've done is we come into our prayer rooms, and I'm not saying this isn't right, but it's not the total package, and we begin into our tongue speaking, and I'm all for it, folks. I speak in tongues a lot. In fact, I would probably venture to say in this church, and this is not bragging, like Paul, I probably speak in tongues more than you all. And that is not a brag. That is just a fact. But I understand there's times when the still small voice of God has got to come through. Because even in my emotions, praise God, I can get caught up in my perspective. And so this woman, Ruth, you know, she's got a little bit of a dilemma, you know. So she was in a bind, like some of us are sometimes. What are we going to do? Who are we going to listen to? Who are we really going to give, you know, this, this kind of understanding to? She couldn't walk away from the message from the Secretary of the Interior. Come on, he had more clout than she did. And so she had no choice but to wait. I like that. She gave up her choice. And boy, that is, that is a revelation, I hope, for somebody right here. That you will start doing that. That you won't make your choices. You will allow God to make those choices for you. I'm telling you, there is no more secure place to be in in this world than that right there. But listen to me, folks. These things aren't going to come cheap. He isn't going to try to, to holler over the crowd at Walmart or, 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 or the radio station and that type of thing. A lot of times these choices that God wants you to make are going to come during your personal consecration. I love God. I don't care who else is around times. That's, what, that's why I believe, really, really believe in personal prayer time. I'm not trying to make you pray. I'm not going to put up a chart and say, you better check it off every day so to make sure that everybody in this church knows you prayed. That, to me, is silliness. And I know we've had programs like that in the past. You know, the bottom line is, you know, do you value God enough to begin to develop that kind of thing that in your life that God can begin to speak to you and he can begin to lay out some things to you? Praise God. Because the Bible says in the midst of Paul's storm, before it all ended, way before it all ended, and it got worse even after this, Paul stood up and said, be of good cheer. I had one of those moments this morning. Brother, I thank you for that. Came down here and things were, you know, it's snowy, you know. Love that, don't you? Yeah. You know, but here's my be of good cheer. He comes out of the car, and he's helping and doing all these things. And, and, I, and I'm, not putting, I'm, I'm not trying to lift Dave up. I'm just trying to tell you they come in, in, in things like that. And, and right away, man, there was an attitude trying to get a hold of me. Just ask my wife. There was an attitude, and it just left. Bam. And things looked a whole lot differently. I'm telling you that did it stop snowing? Did it suddenly get 75 degrees out there? No, because right after that, I walked around the church seven times. And I'll guarantee it was cold. But I'm telling you, even in the midst of a storm, like the Apostle Paul, be of good cheer. For the God whom I serve sent an angel, and he began to communicate with me and said, he's got us in his hands somebody in here today, you really, really should not leave here until you know that. And I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just saying, I, I wouldn't want to go anywhere unless you know you're in the hand of God. No, that doesn't mean you'll never make a mistake. That doesn't mean that you won't have some, some, some things happen to you. But you know he's there. And that's what personal prayer time is. One of the things it's designed to do. You must understand, one of the two biggest purposes for prayer is, first of all, fellowship. Well, fellowship with who? With him. Then, second of all, ministry. And that is not to you. That is to them. So if you don't fellowship with him, no wonder you, don't ha you have a hard time or a limited ability to minister to them. Yeah. 
Oh, we'd have stayed home in bed if we knew you were going to talk about things like this. Yeah, I know. But you're here. And he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying right now. I'm telling you, there's more of this coming if you want it. There's more of, of God than any of us can even imagine. I'm telling you, he is here. Do you feel that? Do you sense that ministry right now? Somebody could stand right now and get the Holy Ghost. Somebody right now could stand and get healed. Somebody right now could lose that attitude that's been plaguing you for months. In the, I'm talking about right now, not tomorrow, not the next day, but right now. In the name of Jesus, do you feel that? No, I'm not going to make you, and I'm not going to beg you and holler and make all kinds of, of, of pleas. But I'm telling you, the Spirit of the Lord is in this place. For he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised in the name of Jesus. God is in the process, praise God, of lifting you up. That's it. Come on. I'm not ashamed to call upon the name of Jesus. I'm not ashamed. He's my hero. He's my savior. He's my everything. He is everything to me. I am not embarrassed a bit. I don't care how many people walk out. I'm not embarrassed. Jesus is my king. He's the almighty God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just take it a little bit step further right now. We're in the right place. We're here at the right time. Jesus is here in the name of Jesus. That's it. That's it. Why don't you renew your prescription to him? Why don't you renew your consecration to him? Come on. It's times like this that those roots can really go down in the name of Jesus. That's it. That's it. Somebody right over there, you're getting a hold of something. Something is happening right now in this place in the name of Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, hallelujah. Mm, hallelujah. I'm not ashamed. Oh, I am not ashamed of the mercy of God. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Blessed be to the name of the Lord. Glory be to your holy name in Jesus' name. Praise God. That's right. Those, those tears are not embarrassing to God. They're not. He doesn't mind that a bit. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are my almighty God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Now let's just thank him together for what he's done. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so I'm, 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 I'm glad in Jesus' name that we're here and we can understand that God is for us. He really is. Amen. The world is what's condemning you. Sin is what's condemning you. Praise God. And even yourself. Amen. That's what condemns you. 
But the Bible teaches us that there's no condemnation for those of us that love God and want to walk the way he wants us to walk. That doesn't mean perfection. It just means that we're going to give it some effort in Jesus' name. So back to Ruth. I didn't forget Ruth. I like that name, Ruth. You know, you have a book in the Bible named after you. She's quite a character, and I like that, okay? But she was in a bind. She couldn't walk away from that message, and she's got to get somewhere. And it might be a week or two before somebody else is going to come along. You see, you've got to understand we're in Alaska right now. We're not even in Wyoming. You know, we're up in Alaska in the 40s where they might get a plane every month to come in sometimes in these places. So you understand the dilemma. But she had orders. And she had something that was of more important. I don't know what happened there, but I guess something did. But she had, she had something of more importance in her life. And I think this is worth noting. If God's word and God's ways, you know, one of the greatest tests in my life, personally, my life, has been the silence of God. When he isn't saying anything to me specifically. And it's like, boy, you know, you know how the imagination can go? I was reading a story here the other day that psychologists say that we can't even imagine how big our imagination is. We just have a huge one. But the silence of God sometimes is a thing that can really, really twist us a little bit because we got all of these thoughts. We, well, maybe he doesn't like me anymore. Maybe he doesn't, um, you know, maybe he, he's, he's just trying to, you know, make a point or something like that. And the silence of God has been very, very, very prevalent at times in my life. And I've found out the different reasons for it and stuff like that. Um, because God doesn't have an ego. He doesn't have to talk a mile a minute. His name isn't Kimberly or Janice or Bob. He doesn't have to talk all the time. I slipped that one right by, and you guys didn't even know what I was saying here. Praise God. But um, the bottom line is, I've realized something about the silence of God, is that sometimes it'll take me back to when I did hear him. And whoa. You know what I have found out many times? Now, this is me. I'm just telling you me. I mean, you're probably different than I. You're a lot smarter than I am. And you just, you, and, and I'm not being facetious. You got to understand, I understand my limitations. But what I have found out sometimes with the silence of God is that I didn't get it. I was so busy wanting to get on that plane. I was so busy, and that's who I am, you know? I can tell you how long it takes almost down to the minute to get from here to Cascade, Iowa. Because believe me, I beat my own records a few times and couldn't tell you what I saw on the way. Just got focused. Well, they say that confession is good for the heart, okay? So this is what I'm trying to do, unload some things, all right? And so I understand that, and I'm not proud of it sometimes, but that's the way it is. So the silence of God sometimes will come, and what it'll cause me to do is to go back to where I did hear from him, or what did I hear from him last? And believe me, folks, a lot of times, not every time, but sometimes it's I didn't quite get that message. I didn't quite get what he was trying to tell me. And so this Ruth gal, she's got a choice, and she made the choice, praise God. And I'm sure she wasn't happy with missing her flight. I'm sure she was, you know, kicking the ground and probably doing all kinds of things like we do, you know. And now she's got to arrange other transportation to Nome. And, boy, this ain't going to be easy. It's not like they got an interstate highway going, you know, up there. And so the impatient pilot couldn't wait just a few more minutes, which ended up, Probably some of you knew I was going here. Saving her life. Soon after takeoff, and this is documented, folks, the plane crashed into the mountain. We've got to understand. Killed everybody on board. He couldn't wait just a little bit. And listen to me, folks. One of the reasons why we are struggling so much in this world today is because we have bred and rebred and, 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 and just cultivated a spirit of impatience amongst us. That's why sometimes our prayer times get almost like it's an emergency. And I'm not saying we haven't had times like that. Please don't, don't try to, you know, culminate everything I'm saying here. I understand there's times, but if you're doing everything the same way, you're really limiting yourself with God. 
And that's why we must understand that there's times when God wants to bring that patience back in our lives. Praise God. And that's what has helped me. Part of the things that has helped me to stay in Gillette. Because through patience, God has helped Sister Carnahan and I see. Well, yeah, that's what's happening. That's what's happening. That's what's happening. That's why I took away that choice years ago. God is going to have to tell me to leave Gillette before I'll do it. Even when it's five degrees and it's snowing. As him and I talked about it again this morning. I don't know how it works for you, but my driveway grows in the wintertime. It's not that big in the summertime. Larry, you did it again this morning. You get a half an inch or an inch of snow on that thing, and it's like, my goodness, how come it's this big? Anybody else identify with me? Yeah. Well, I've heard you guys say it. Let me just put it in your court. Oh, it's never been this cold. Come on, folks. We've had it like this before. That's why patience is so important. Praise God. You know, that's why there was a guy named Solomon that wrote the, the, a book called Ecclesiastes. That we could begin to see what goes around comes around. That's just the way it is. Listen to me. I know we've heard all of these, you know, uh, end time people, and, and I'm not against them. Please, I'm not. I think some of them are of God. I don't know if they all are, but I think there are some that are. But believe me, when God gets the rocking and rolling down here, everybody's going to know that. That one is not, you're not even going to have the slightest doubt on that one. So get that out of your mind. Right now, God is on the throne. He is saving people. He is drawing more people right now than ever in the history of mankind towards him right now. Do you want to know why? Because demographics tells us that there are more people on the face of the earth right now than there ever has been in the history of mankind, praise God. And so this is why God is drawing more people, praise God. Now, the real question is, is he drawing you? Come on, is he drawing you? This is what he wants to do, praise God. He wants to draw you in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Would you lift your hands right now? And would you just ask him to do it? Just ask him to draw you. Mm. Mm. Oh, praise God. Yes, I'm not ashamed, Lord. I, I got a reverse gear in, my, in, in, in me, Lord God, that if I'm going the wrong way, I'm going to put that thing in reverse and get right back on the highway that I know is of you in Jesus' name. That's it, saint. That's it. He's already given you that. He's already told you those things in the name of Jesus because he cares for you, not because of your behavioral uh, pattern this week. It's not because of how much money you give. It's not how of who you are. It's because of who he is. He loves you. He cares for you. He is trying to draw you right now. This is the age that we're living in. Jesus referred to it through prophecy when he said we're in the acceptable year of the Lord. That means anybody that wants to be saved can be saved. I'm telling you right now, you can draw close to him right now, even in this service right now. In fact, that's what we're feeling. We're feeling that, that God is drawing us. I don't think there's a, there's a speck of, of condemnation left in this place, unless you're trying to keep it for yourself. That's your business though. But I'm telling you, there's no condemnation from the Lord in this place right now. There is only, only uh, sympathy. And I'm going to tell you something, that's what mercy and grace does, is it has sympathy with the remedy. He's already telling you what you should do. He's already telling you you can make it, praise God. He's already unloaded truckloads of encouragement in this place in the name of Jesus. It's for you. It's for me in the name of Jesus. It's because of his great love for us. He loves us in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, and I praise you for what you are doing in the name of Jesus. I am excited, Lord God, for what's going to happen in some of these people's lives in the name of Jesus because of what you're doing. Oh, hallelujah. What a mighty God that we serve. What a mighty God. Oh, wow, I'm not ashamed. I am not ashamed. Praise the name of the Lord in Jesus' name.
name. Praise God. Praise God. Let me take you to a portion of scripture, and this is probably about it for me to this morning as far as preaching, unless God has something else in mind, and that's okay. Praise God. Let me um, bring you to the, to the um, and I know she's not back there right now, but I'm sure she'll come, um, so you'll have to open up your Bibles, to the book of Luke, the gospel of Luke chapter number 10. The gospel of Luke chapter number 10. Praise God. I am so thankful for the gospels what they teach me and how they portray Jesus. Amen. And Luke's is probably one of the most, oh, I'd say detailed, you know, because of probably who he was or whatever the case is. I mean, that's, that's what we say. But nevertheless, it is. It's got a, a lot of, of information there. And in verse number 38, verse 38, if you've got somebody sitting next to you that doesn't have a Bible, why don't you share it with him or with them? You know, let's make sure that they know that this pastor does teach out of the Word of God. <laughs> You know, he's not just telling stories all the time, you know. Um, the Bible says, now it came to pass, and that's profound. <laughs> Those five words have come up in my life a lot of times, and I'm sure in yours. As they went, that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him unto her house. There's lots of implications there, but that is an important thing. I've always said there's two safe places in the world, or there should be. One of them is the church. I'm talking about his church, not just any church, because we've heard a lot of stories about churches, haven't we? But God's church, if there's a man of God, if there's an under-shepherd that is worthy of God's, um, what he's doing, praise God, it'll be safe, you know? Uh, and, I, and I work hard about that. That's one of the reasons I walk around this church on a periodic basis. Not so that I can get exercise, but so I pray down stuff. Because when you come here on a Sunday morning, I want everything just to be as, 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 as powerful as God wants to make it. Praise God. And so she invited him into her home. That's the other safe place. If you're living in an apartment or you got a home someplace, I would pray that you would allow God to, t to, to or listen to the Lord to help you to make that home safe. Because he can. He can make that home safe. And it can feel, you can feel the peace of God just like you feel it right here. Amen. And I know all of you have felt the peace of God. Maybe you're not used to this, but you felt that here this morning. Peace of God is tremendous. Amen. And some of you might be going through some pretty tough storms, by the way, but you can still feel the peace, can't you? Well, so here he comes to a village, a certain village. No, he had an appointment. God always has divine appointments. And the Bible says she had a sister called Mary. So you got Mary and Martha. And I know most of you have heard this story before, so don't get ahead of me. Let's see if we can get, get some reasoning from the Lord. And the Bible says she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Um, I, I've read that, I don't know how many hundreds of times I've read that. And I'm going to tell you right now, every time I read it, and this morning included, I would have liked to have done that. You might have to help me here in just a minute. Okay, but um, um, just sit there and just listen to him. Wow. You know. And um, let's see if I can do this. Yeah, I can. I got it. I got it. I got it. Um, but uh, you know, that would have been a, would have been quite a deal. But even doing that, you know, there were challenges. One of the things that we are struggling with in this world is focus. Your mind has the ability to take in a lot of stuff. And what happens when you take in a lot of stuff is you get overwhelmed. And probably every one of you have felt that this, this week. The media and everything like that, you just, you know, we weren't built for this. We're fallen creatures. And so what God a lot of times will do is try to bring focus into your life. And I'm going to show you how he does it. This will be cool. You're going to like this. This ain't going to hurt. Okay? I have to go to the dentist on Tuesday. You don't. Okay? All right. Now watch. The Bible says, but Mary, or I'm sorry, in verse number 40, but Martha, we're in 10 and 40 right now, Luke. We went ahead and started without you, Sister Carnahan. But Martha was cumbered, you know. The word there actually means burden. She had a lot on her mind. Look at somebody and say, I got a lot on my mind. Look at somebody else and say, and so do you. See, that's why I had to deliberately slow it down here this morning because all of you came this morning with a lot on your mind. You did. I did. But be of good cheer. 
That's what got it off my mind. And I could begin to focus on the Lord. Now, don't you paint me like, hey, this guy is superhuman and he can do it. No, I can't. I'm just like you. And there's times when I get burdened. Listen to me. There's times when I get overburdened. And so do you. So what's the remedy? The remedy is to get focused. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, the Bible says that Martha, her burdens came out of her mouth. They came out of her thinking, and normally that's the case when we know people. And the Bible says she was cumbered about much serving. I've had people get upset because they're doing it and nobody else is. Been there. Had that myself. And came to him and said, Lord, dost not thou care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Boy, that one is intimidating, isn't it, isn't it if you weren't the Lord? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. I want you to straighten this out right now, Jesus. And I'm sure that some of you had the same idea about your overburdens. There you are. Come on, folks. I like this because we can identify with this. Now watch. Jesus answered, and here's what I want to help you to understand. What is focusing? I'll tell you what focusing can be. Martha, Martha. Thou art careful and troubled about many things. But here it is. Three words. This one thing. That's what God will help us with if he wants us to get focused on him. He won't give you 12, 18, 35. He'll say, why don't you go back to the one thing that's really important right now. And what God had to do in the flesh to a woman who I believe loved the Lord. I believe she wanted to do what was right. But she's like us. She had it all misunderstood. Jesus was in the house. Why did we invite him there? Why did we come here? I'll tell you why. To focus on him. Now take it another step. I'm not ashamed to shout out the name. Why? Because I need to focus on him. And you people have taught me this. I didn't do this in the other churches I went to. I didn't have this understanding before I got the Holy Ghost. But now I do. Do I have to go back to this? Brother, you better take this. I'm telling you right now, God is going to do some things. But you're in danger of missing it. Go back to that Focus on him. Praise God. Focus on him in the name of Jesus. That was, by the way, not a rebuke. That was a word from God. I'll do that any time that God inserts that in my preaching. I don't care who you are. I don't care how mad you get at me. I don't care how embarrassed you are. I'm telling you right now, God is more important to me than anybody in this place in the name of Jesus. And getting his message across, getting his word across to you is my primary desire right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, you feel another wave of the Holy Ghost? So do I. This is not playtime. This is challenging time. We're living in perilous times. You can tell me all you want about that. But this one thing is needful. And Jesus has come into this place right now to help you to get unburdened, to get uncumbered, whatever the word is, in the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on to me, he said. Jesus said, come on to me, all ye that are heavy laden and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. Still embarrassed? Still ashamed to do the things that God wants you to do? I'm telling you, I'm going to do anything I can to get focused on him. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you think of me in Jesus' name. Oh, I'm, I'm sure that's quite apparent to most of you by now. Oh, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That's what I'm talking about. She's chosen. Mary didn't, she wasn't told to, she chose it. When Jesus came into the house, she was smart enough to realize who was there. And she was smart enough to realize that nothing else matters. Mm. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus, I pray for these, Lord God. I feel such heavy burdens right now. Some of them are going through family matters. They're going through financial straits. They're just, they're, they're tempted on every realm. But Lord God, I know you're here in the name of Jesus to do great things. In the name of Jesus, you are here to do great things. In the name of, Je oh my goodness. Oh, hallelujah. Oh. Oh, oh, hallelujah. Oh, oh, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. That's why, that's why, I don't know if it was my second or if it was my first. I don't know, maybe it was my third lap around this building. But God gave me this song. And I couldn't get it out of my head. Praise the name of the Lord. And I want to help somebody in the name of Jesus. And that's why I felt from the Lord to go ahead and to just sing it right away. And I know some of you misunderstood and thought, well, we should start a different way. But I'll tell you right now, I felt this in the name of Jesus. And if you'll do what the Lord is asking you to do, while we do it the second time, I'm telling you, you're going to feel something and get something that maybe you've never had before in Jesus' name. I'm going to dance for you like nobody's watching. Nobody's watching me. Dance for you. My Lord, I'm going to sing for you. Oh, like nobody's listening, nobody's listening. I'm going to sing for you, oh, my Lord. I'm not holding anything back, anything back. I will worship you with all that I am. There's a key, hallelujah, because I'm not ashamed up the name of Jesus, Jesus, no, I'm not ashamed to shout out the name of the Lord, no, I'm not ashamed to worship the name of Jesus, no, Jesus, no, I'm not ashamed to shout out the name of the Jesus, 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 Jesus. That's right, say it. Just give him a shout. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm going to worship you. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. I'm going to worship you, my Lord. Like Mary, I'm going to worship you. Like nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. Worship you. With all that I am, that's right, cause I'm not ashamed to worship the name of Jesus, yes, Jesus, I'm not ashamed to shout out the name of the Lord, oh, I'm not ashamed to worship the name of Jesus, Jesus, no, I'm not ashamed to shout out your name, amen. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Why don't you try that once? You 
shout out the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, that's right. He is great. Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, that's right. Because, Lord, I'm going to dance for you. Lord, I'm going to sing for you. Lord, I'm going to worship you. I'm not afraid. I'm not ashamed. Lord, I'm going to dance for you. Lord, I'm going to sing for you. Lord, I'm going to worship you. I'm not afraid. I'm not ashamed. Lord, I'm going to dance for you. Lord, I'm going to sing for you. Lord, I'm going to worship you. I'm not afraid. I'm not ashamed. Nothing's going to hinder me. Nothing's going to silence me. Shout it out if you believe. I'm not afraid. I'm not ashamed. Nothing's going to hinder me. Nothing's going to silence me. Shout it out if you believe. I'm afraid. Oh, hallelujah. I'm not ashamed to worship the name of Jesus. Jesus. No, I'm not ashamed to shout out your name of the Lord. To worship the name of Jesus, Jesus. No, I'm not ashamed to shout out your name of the Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, Jesus. afraid in Jesus name praise God praise God I feel like we need to take a few minutes here and some of you need to begin to recognize the still small voice of God in Jesus name in your life in moments like this I lift up my voice I lift up my voice to Jesus in moments like this I sing out a song yes I do I sing out a love song to sing of God is fantastic. Hallelujah. Singing I love you Lord. One more time. In moment like this, I lift up my voice, I lift up my voice unto Jesus, in moments like this, I sing out a song, oh I sing
I don't do this real often, but I do feel it. And I will ask your permission. I have got a burden for you. I do. And if you wouldn't mind, would you mind if, if I prayed for you? Would that be okay? Okay, is that your son? Yeah, yeah. He looks like a good boy. Sometimes. Yeah. He's by uh, here. Praise God. But I feel, I feel like the Lord is has done some things for you even just in this service and I don't know what's going to happen with them all and it doesn't matter to me but I feel just to pray for you I have a burden for you I really do and I want God to do something great for you in Jesus name Lord God in the name of Jesus I appreciate her wandering in here Lord God and I just appreciate what you have been doing and the things that you've been saying to her in Jesus name and Lord God just reaffirm those things in her mind even this week let her feel this and sense this, Lord God, and get understanding on what this is all about in Jesus' name. Strengthen her, Lord God, and I'm going to believe that you're going to do that in the name of Jesus. And I give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Is that okay? Is that all right? All right. All right. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. And just so you won't go out here, why don't you do this? Why don't you, because I feel the ministry of the Lord in this place. One of the instructions Jesus gave us is the laying on of hands. I don't have it all figured out, but I know there's an impartation that happens with faith in that realm. And so let's give that an opportunity for maybe 30 seconds. And if you're around somebody that you feel comfortable or they'll accept it, why don't you go ahead and lay your hands on somebody right now. Let's pray. Let's ask God to help us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for people that will come and open up their hearts and receive with meekness the engrafted word that's able to save them. I, I thank you for that, God. That is one of the greatest blessings in my life to see fulfilled. Move upon everyone right now because there is faith in this place. There is beautiful faith in this place. That's it. That's it. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. What a beautiful ministry right now. This is gorgeous from my standpoint. I'm just seeing it. Oh, hallelujah. That's it, Lord God. That's it. Just touch and remove and, and just help us, Lord God, to climb into those depths, those heavenly places, Lord, that you have in store for us. Heavenly places. Thank you, Jesus, for what you do in the name of Jesus. Let the power of the spoken word come and just just resonate through every one of us our minds and our ears right now that we will know for without a shadow of a doubt this is for us this is for us lord god in the name of jesus and i give you the praise and the glory in jesus name what do you say we do that one more time together Praise God, praise God. Tonight again, we'll, we'll endeavor to come into his presence and however he decides he wants to do it, I mean, to a certain degree, we're going to follow him and no, not to a certain degree, to every degree in Jesus' name. And so I'll go ahead and dismiss here. Let me make a couple of announcements. We have the bread Bibles, but in our hurry to get off um, our home today, we forgot to bring them, so we'll make sure they get here tonight. Um, there's grocery stuff in the back. Sister Carnahan scored a pretty good deal with the local uh, grocery company here in town, and so there's stuff back there that you can purchase at a real reduced price. Um, we have a prayer meeting here on Tuesday night, so that you know that if you want to come around 7 o'clock, that's what we do here. And then Saturday, uh, this is just for men, I don't know why, but I guess um, I'm just making the announcement, but there's a pheasant feed here. They're going to feed pheasant and so um, cook them first, I hope, and then, um, and then that will be here, and that's Saturday at 1 o'clock, and then, of course, we're in the midst, on the downhill side of this, but we're in the midst of a 30 days of prayer and fasting, that we are joining thousands of churches throughout the entire world, praise God, and so feel the impact of that by becoming involved in it, in Jesus' name. If you have a tither or, or an offering that you want to leave before you leave, at the doors, there's offering plates, and you can do that as you leave. In Jesus' name. God bless you, folks. Thanks for making your way here. In Jesus' name.